I'm Nile Rogers here at Dub Spot, and it's a wonderful day for me. We are family. Put on your red shoes and go. I've been writing with a lot of composers who are writing in an electronic environment. Perfect example, I've been writing with Avicii. So I'll come up with an idea, harmonically rich and complex, and it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I'll work on it, and then I give it to Tim Avicii, and then he now has the ability to take that analog information, because I give it to him as audio, and he starts manipulating it on the spot while I'm already working on the next idea. So it's like I have my songwriting partner there doing his thing while I'm already making the next move, and then we sort of get to a certain point where we stop and collectively come together and we start trading ideas. <laughs> I specifically had a formal writing and recording session set up with David Guetta in LA. You know, we're going really to the studio and now we're gonna do something important. So my guitar had been sent to Fender because they're recreating my sound. Because my guitar, I promise, is the only guitar that sounds like that. So they've decided that they're gonna try and recreate this thing and they've been working on it for years. So they sent my real guitar back to me. And I'm just about to record with Guetta and I pick up my guitar and I'm doing these rudimentary exercises up and down the neck just to see if everything is even and that my guitar sounds and feels the way it was when I sent it to them. So I'm just practicing and fooling around. I'm not trying to make music, I'm just trying to check the instrument. In doing these silly rudimentary exercises, because I'm playing them chromatically, I wind up playing this riff that I have never played in my life, ever. It was just, because I wasn't trying to make music, I was just trying to check it. And I just jumped up and said, this is incredible. So I scream out to Nicky Romero, get the engineer, get the engineer and record this because I'm going to forget it. Record it into my laptop, <laughs> just let's get it down. I recorded it, finally the engineer walked in. Now here's the cool thing is that unbeknownst to me, Nicky had already taken that sound file and was just sort of like building a beat on top of it. So I'm waiting for the engineer, I record it. Now I've been practicing this thing for like, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, trying to keep it in my head until the engineer gets in the room. Because to me, Nicky just has the first version of it, but now I've got it developed and I got it down now. So I could play this with comfort. The engineer walks in the room, I record it, and it's killing. And finally Nicky says, listen to this, and he gives me the headphones, and he's already taking it to the next level. When Geta walked in the room, he was like amazed. He was like, whoa, what is that? And he said, that's so incredible, but it's so underground. And I looked at him and laughed and I said, it's underground? This is pop music to me. <laughs> I think that repurposing music in today's world is actually one of the most viable ways to compose. When I hear chic samples, I'm always amazed at how clever composers can be with that stuff. If you had seen Felix the House Cat and I jamming in my dressing room about a year and a half ago, you really would have been impressed. And he was working with completed compositions or snippets of completed sheet compositions, whereas I was now just playing live new stuff. And he was able to take my old stuff and play along with me and make something new out of it. I mean, honestly, it was really exciting for me. This is the thing that really sort of disturbs me in a way. Like a lot of old school guys believe that if you're not doing it the way they did it, it's not valid. And I'm like, please get off that. that that's just not right. I learned music the way I learned it because that's what they were teaching at the time. If I could have learned music this way, as well as what I learned, I mean, who would I be? I don't even know what I would be capable of. <laughs> 
musicians, when you're creative, everything becomes a workaround, no matter how much this technology allows us to do. You know, we all have different things that, that make us work, that make us uniquely who we are. When I'm working with Avicii, based on his own knowledge base, he's doing what he does, and based on my knowledge base, I do what I do. Together, it becomes so powerful because I have all of this stuff that I'm calling on all the time, he has stuff that he's calling upon all the time, and, and together it becomes so much stronger. Trying to say one system is more valid than the next makes zero sense to me, and I hate it. It makes my skin crawl. I, I just hate it when people try and say to me, oh, well, when I, when I was, it makes me feel like my father talking to me. Yeah, well, when I was a DJ, we only did this. Like, yeah, well, because that's what you had. Thank you. I want your love. All I really live to do is finish the composition so hopefully it moves other people. I'm not hung up on how we did it. When I made my first records, I swear to God, nobody ever pulled me aside and questioned me and asked me how I wrote Everybody Dance. They didn't care. They just went, everybody dance, do 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 do, clap your hands. They, they just danced. I really don't like to give advice because I know that the thing that turned me around was a harsh lesson. I grew up as a sort of musical snob. I was a jazz snob. And I thought that all pop music was beneath me. I thought that I was doing great. I thought that I was becoming the best jazz guitar player I could ever be. And when my teacher sort of put me in my place because of my snobism, if you will, that was the greatest lesson I could have ever gotten. I mean. I would have never known. I thought that just doing my, you know, I thought that was what I should be doing. And basically he was telling me I should open my mind. The real lesson was not the intellectual part of it. The real lesson was the spiritual part of it, the artistic part of it, get in tune with what you really feel. Because the truth of that lesson was I didn't know who I was. The same music that I was dissing is really the music that I love. That's the music that opened my mind. Dance music is the most liberating music in the world to me. Everything else prior to that, I had been trying to conform to a set of rules that I had to play by. And I used to always let, make jokes. I'm being governed by the jazz police and the classical police. And I tried to write pop music that could pass the smell test of the jazz and classical police. It was only when I started to write music for DJs, which ultimately were playing it for the people, that I had a new mission. So the only thing I could say is just be truthful to yourself. I mean, sometimes we learn who we are by failure. So I've learned to embrace the failure. If we're being motivated by just trying to sell, personally, I think you're in the wrong business because most music doesn't sell. Most music doesn't recoup, let alone go number one. I've probably had I don't even know, I don't count them, but I've had 15, 20 number, I mean, I don't even know how many, but a lot of number one records. But I never did any of them to try and go number one. I did them because I loved them, and I hoped they went number one. I've always appreciated the fact that dance music liberated a person like me, and I never want to stop learning. <laughs> Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music. <laughs>